If I open up an object in GameMaker and take a look at our events, you'll notice that there is no pre-create. This means that the earliest entry point into an object is through the create event itself. You might say, so what? I don't need a pre-create. I'll just put all of my code in the create event. And for most of the time, this is fine. You can make this work and you can get away with this without really any issues. However, there are times that we want to have our create event configure itself to a set of incoming parameters. Just in the same way that we pass parameters into a function to modify that function's behavior, we may want to pass in parameters into an object to modify that object's behavior. I wanna show how we can leverage existing GameMaker language features to implement this pre-create functionality and show the power and usefulness of having this in your toolkit. Let's take a look at our object here. And in this example, we're going to think of an enemy. An enemy may have several different types. For example, it may be passive or aggressive. Passive enemies are going to have less health points, a slower movement speed, lower attack values, and may be more distracted in its pathfinding. Whereas aggressive enemy types are gonna have faster movement speed, higher health totals, increased attack values, and more focused in its pathfinding. This means that we want to have a type variable act as a parameter and has the enemy object change depending on that type variable. In a previous life, we would have a function or script called create enemy, and this function would take in a type variable as a parameter. We would then use that type variable to create our enemy instance. And then we would return the enemy. But somewhere in between these points, we would say enemy.type is equal to type. In theory, this seems fine. However, when we invoke instance create depth, this is going to run the create event. This means that our type value will not be set until after the create event has run. So any code in our create event that would change based off of this type wouldn't actually happen. We run the create event, then we set the type. In this case, we wanna set the type before we run the create event. Well, if I try to do something like this, well, this is not going to work because our enemy instance hasn't been created yet, so we can't set a variable to an instance that doesn't exist. So how can we solve this problem? Recently, GameMaker added in new features to the GameMaker language that allow us to pass in an optional struct in this instance create depth runtime function. This means that instead of setting the type after the fact, we can set the type during instantiation. So I could say type is equal to our incoming type. So now if I come into the object, I can act on that type variable. So I could put something like a switch statement that says switch on type. And I say, if type is aggressive, then life equals 100. If type is passive, then life equals 50. And even though I have not set this type variable up here, this will still work. So typically, if I tried to run this code without passing this in, this would crash because we would go to check for a type variable that belongs to this OBJ enemy and it wouldn't exist. But because I'm passing it in through this optional struct parameter, I know that type is going to exist before this create event runs. So I can actually do something like this. So let's go ahead and create an instance of this object. Now, if I go ahead and try to place the object in the room directly and run the project, then I'm going to get a crash. Enemy.type not set before reading it. And this makes sense. I'm creating the instance by placing it in the room. This code here that sets the type during instantiation doesn't actually run. So instead of creating it here, I'm gonna go ahead and create another object. I'm gonna call this OBJ controller. I'm gonna place this controller object in the room and inside of our controller step events, I'm gonna say if keyboard check pressed, VK space, and let's go ahead and invoke our method that we created earlier called create enemy. And I'll pass in a type, I'll say aggressive, and I'm gonna run the project. So now if I hit space, we can see that we have an object here and it is of type aggressive. Let's say I wanted to change the type to passive and it is passive. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint here and run this in our debug mode. I'm going to hit space, come back to our debugger, and let's step through the debug. We can see that inside of our function, type is of passive, 
we assign type to our struct variable type, pass that into instance create depth, and as we step through it, now we are inside of our enemy's create events, we run our switch statements, and we assign our value. So what happens if inside of our function, I get rid of this parameter? It is optional after all, so I should be able to run the same code without forcing that variable. I hit space, and here we have a crash, obj enemy.type not set before reading it. This kind of defeats the purpose. If this parameter is designed to be optional, and yet when I don't include it, the game crashes, or let's say I do include the struct, but I don't define the type, I say life is 100, and I still get the crash, then this kind of defeats the purpose, because as we mentioned, it is supposed to be an optional parameter struct. So how do we circumvent this? This is where we're going to use one of the other language features inside of GameMaker, and we are going to define what our optional parameters are at the top of our object's create event. And to do this, we're going to access the object as a struct. So I'm going to say self of type, and I'm going to use a nullish operator here, is aggressive. So what have I done? I've used a nullish operator to access the variable type from self as a struct. Two parts here. By saying self of type, I am allowing for this to return undefined. And when we come into this create event, if I didn't pass in type into our function, this will be undefined. We will try to access type from self. It will not have been set, and then it will be undefined. Pairing that with our nullish operator means that if this is undefined, we will assign it to aggressive. So what have we done here? We have defined our default values. Okay, so if I run this in debug mode again, let's put a breakpoint at our instance create depth function. I hit space. I create the instance. I step through the function. I'm going to go to self. I can even confirm this by coming over to our left-hand panel over here, expanding, looking at our self, and I want to look for a variable called type. So let's sort this alphabetically, scroll to the T's, and would you look at that type doesn't exist here. So what is this going to do? It's going to return undefined. And then this nullish operator is going to say, well, since this is undefined, assign type of self to aggressive. So I step through it, and if I come look over here, would you notice that type is now aggressive? So then we can move forward and we can do our switch statements. And we see that it's aggressive, so we assign life to 100, which is confirmed in our variable inspector. So lastly, now let's say I pass in this variable struct again, and I'm gonna say type is passive. So here's the question, what is this value going to be? We define it as default as aggressive, but I'm passing it in as passive. Which value will it be? The correct answer is passive because we've defined a default, which means if we don't pass it in, it's gonna default to that value. But since we are passing it in, we override it. This is the same as writing if self of type is equal to undefined, then self of type is equal to aggressive. These are the same exact statements. Line 12 is exactly the same as lines 14 through 16. We just simplify it. Using this knowledge operator, we get to write it in one line. So lastly, just for fun, let's put a breakpoint here. Let's run through the debugger again. I press space to create the instance. I open up the debugger, I step through. So let's go ahead and take a look. Self, let's open it up. And if you notice, type is already defined. So when this nullish operator runs, it's gonna say, hey, this is actually not undefined. So don't do the rest of the statement, step over it. So here I'm trying to set it to aggressive, but here it's set as passive. So what do we get? We keep the passive value. We go into our switch statement and sure enough, our passive variable sticks. So in summary, what have we done? We have combined four different features to make this happen. What are the four features that we have combined? One, creating an instance using instance create depth or instance create layer and utilizing the optional parameter struct. Two, we define the default value using the struct accessor. Three, we define the default using the nullish operator. And four, allowing the create events to run with the parameters implemented.
using these four steps, creating an instance using one of these runtime functions, while also passing in an optional struct, defining the default value by accessing it using the struct accessor notation, and three, utilizing the knowledge operator for ease of use and simplicity, and then letting the rest of the code run. This is a very simple example of how we can utilize these features to define default parameter values and configure our object based off of optional parameters, but it is extremely powerful and this opens up so many opportunities for designing complex game objects. In the next video, I'm going to show how we can do this exact same thing with constructor objects. It's a little bit different syntax, but we're going to achieve the same idea. So that's what we have to look forward to in the next video. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you guys soon.